Good day. In this video, we are going to discuss the Italian cuisine. Familiarize about the types of Italian pasta and their uses. Angel hair pasta is long and thin, thinner than spaghetti. It's best with light oil, based and cream sauces. Bucatini. It looks a lot like traditional spaghetti. However, it's more round, and there's a hole through the middle that gives each noodle a hollow center. This makes it a little thicker than spaghetti noodles. When cooked in soups, pasta dishes, and casseroles, it hoards extra sauce. Fettuccine. Fettuccine long, flat pasta from Rome, and pappardelle flat, wide pasta ribbons from Tuscany. It's a thicker, and more dense noodle. It's fairly white, so it works well with chunky meat sauces, unlike other types of long pasta. Creamy Alfredo sauce tossed in with fettuccine is a dynamic duo. Spaghetti. Popular types include spaghetti long, thin strands of pasta. It's cylinder shaped like angel hair and bucatini. However, its thickness falls somewhere in the middle. It's not quite as thin as angel's hair, but it's thinner than bucatini. Meatballs are always a classic combination. Linguine resembles fettuccine, but it's not as wide. It's a common noodle pairing for seafood dishes, mixed with white wine sauces and clams and mussels. Any cream-based or white wine sauce tastes like a dream with linguine noodles. Pappardelle pasta noodles are even better at meshing with rich, meat-based sauces. For example, it's most commonly used in regat or bolognese but it's also great for seafood, pasta dishes. It's big, and sturdy, so you can throw any hearty sauce its way. Tagliatelle. Tagliatelle thin pasta ribbons from Bologna. It's easy to mistake tagliatelle and fettuccine. In fact, in some parts of Italy, cooks refer to tagliatelle as fettuccine. Both types of pasta look like flattened spaghetti and are a similar width but tagliatelle will be a little thicker of a bite. It can also handle thick meat sauces, but it'll do a cream or tomato sauce justice, too. Vermicelli. Think thin. Vermicelli noodles are skinny. There's Italian and Asian vermicelli. One is made with semolina, and the latter a rice noodle. You can toss vermicelli with some olive oil and canned tomatoes for a light spaghetti-like dish or use them in stir fries and soups. Short pasta. Shorter noodles come in a variety of shapes that will all catch sauces in different ways. It works great with thicker and chunkier sauces that have meat and vegetables. Because of their unique shapes, most short types of pasta are made with an extruder machine that cuts the shapes with a mold. Campanelle. Campanelle pasta is one of the lesser heard of pasta shapes. It's rolled in a cone and has a ruffled edge, like a small bell-shaped flower. The hollow center will catch thick sauces well, and you could even cook as a substitute to elbows in macaroni and cheese. Casserac. Picture a tube-shaped pasta, but slightly open with rolled edges that weren't quite connected. Casserac is like a loosely rolled and twisted noodle. The center will also catch sauces well. Cavatappi. This hollow, spiral-shaped noodle is also referred to as double elbow pasta. The multiple twist and turns provide lots of surface area to get coated with sauce and trap it inside, plus the extra length gives more chew. Yes, it's great in macaroni and cheese. Fussly. This spiral-shaped noodle has a lot of grooves and crevices to catch extra sauce and dressings. It's sturdy enough to toss with a thicker sauce like marinara or meat sauce. But it's also commonly used in pasta salads. Rotini is a commonly known corkscrew-shaped pasta. It has a tighter spiral than fusilli. But like fusilli, it catches all types of sauces well. From thick and meaty to oil-based to creamy, it can handle it all. This is goon in one part chicken cacciator. Farfowl. It sounds exotic, 
but it's merely bow tie pasta. You'll find it in all types of creamy pasta as well as pasta salads, and maybe even accompanying elbow macaroni on your kids, our project. There's not a lot you can't do with this type of pasta. Gemelli. Gemelli pasta noodles look like two thin ropes twisted together. However, it's playing a trick on your eyes. It's one noodle twisted to look that way. It collects sauce well, and it's a common noodle choice when adding leafy veggies and herbs to pasta and pasta salad. Penne. Penne tube shapes from Liguria. Penne is likely already a family favorite in your kitchen. It's a hollow cylinder-shaped noodle with slanted edges. It has ridges that make its texture ideal for catching sauce. You might also see it called mostach sholi. In addition to various pasta recipes, it's another common noodle used in casseroles. I mixed with chicken and zucchini in the chicken piccata pasta dish. Rotelli. Rotelli looks a lot like something you'd see in a kid's soup and often will. It's a fun wheel shape that catches all types of sauces and ingredients in a soup or pasta. It's small and bite-sized. Rigatoni. Rigatoni looks like the sister noodle to penne. It's also cylinder shaped with ridges in its texture. However, it's slightly stumpier and not as narrow and it doesn't have the slanted edges that penne does. Like penne, the ridges and gaping center will trap sauce, so every bite is cheesy and creamy and flavorful. Butternut squash pasta recipe, or yet. These noodles are often compared to the shape of ears, and you can see why. While it's a diverse type of pasta that works well with most recipes, cream sauces love to cling to it. The little dips in its centers look small, but work magic for catching sauce and flavor. Ziti. Ziti is another type of pasta that looks very similar to penne. It's also narrow and hollow, but it has straight edges and no ridges in its texture. Baked ziti is a common dish on the menu at Italian restaurants, so it's casserole friendly. Others love it tossed with a little olive oil or tomato sauce for a simple weeknight pasta dish. Conchiglai. Conchiglai is simply another word for shells. You'll see them in a variety of sizes from mini to small to medium to jumbo. Of course, homemade macaroni is their claim to fame. But their open centers are great for trapping any type of cream, sauce or thick and hearty meat sauce. Ozo. Ozo is often mistaken for a grain, but it's a type of pasta, possibly the smallest of the small pasta shapes. It resembles rice, and it's often used to make ozo pasta salads. It can also add great texture to soups. Daitlini. Daitlini is also on the smaller end of the spectrum, when it comes to small pasta shapes. If you were to slice a ziti noodle into several smaller noodles, that's what daitlini resembles. It's common in minestrone soup, and it's a staple ingredient in pasta fagioli. Chic pasta. Exactly as it sounds, chic pasta noodles are thin and flat like a sheet of paper but small dimensions of course. Lasagna. This is easily the most common type of sheet pasta. Its ruffled, decorative edges characterize its shape. Of course, it's used to make lasagna, layered between ricotta cheese and meat sauce in a traditional recipe. Vegan tortellini in sauces or serve it in a brothy or tomato soup. It's also great tossed in a little oil and parmesan cheese since it already has lots of flavors stuffed into the filling. Ravioli. Ravioli is square and stuffed. Store-bought ravioli is often on the smaller side, but don't be surprised if you're served large ravioli at some Italian restaurants. The edges are pinched close and have a ruffled texture. You'll find them stuffed with everything from cheese to vegetables to meat. Manicotti. Think of manicotti like jumbo penne noodles. It's the same texture and shape but much larger. And you know what that means. More space to stuff it with cheese and sauce. 
It is baked as a casserole. It also loves a good meaty bolognese sauce in the center. Gnocchi. Made differently from hand-rolled and extruded pasta. Gnocchi calls on the potato as the base ingredient with flour and egg added. The result is a dense and small dumpling shape.